Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. I'm here with this lovely specimen in the pointy stick of doom to talk to you about a garden perennial. The plant before you is Artemisia dracunculus, variety sativa, also known as French tarragon. It's in the Asteraceae family, which means it's related to things like coneflower, rebecca, uh, marigolds, and a bunch of other stuff. The Aster family really gets around. You know, I mean, its most famous member is sunflowers, but there are other members that you should consider. Now, in the case of French tarragon, it's native to Eurasia, but has become naturalized in North America. It is a perennial in USDA zones 3 through 7, and is considered a deciduous perennial, meaning that it goes naked in the winter. Oh, baby. And then it sprouts fresh from the rhizomatous rootstock. It prefers a soil pH of 6.5 to 7.5, but will tolerate crappy, low-nutrition soils, which makes it kind of unique. I mean, the good seasoning herbs usually do. What's interesting is that um, its exposure is a true full sun setup. Six plus hours, even in the southeastern laser sun, it's still fine. In the trials, I found that it's especially resilient and drought-hardy once established. Its height can be 2 feet to 2.5 feet, with a width of 12 inches to 15 inches, which is pretty good. Though our specimen here didn't exactly get the memo, and in case you're wondering what that is in the back, that is a pansy that volunteered. We're not judging. Anyway, uh, other names for this plant include estragon, which I've not been able to find a source for, but it's been mentioned in several publications. And dragon, which is the Swedish, Dutch, and German name for it. Now, interestingly, dracunculus means little dragon, which refers to the coiled roots. So you can see how dragon came about. And I, I think I'm going to call this plant dragon. You want some dragon seasoning? Hey, baby. Now, it has some alternatives. Russian tarragon is hardier, but ta is not as pungent, not as flavorful, and not as desirable. However, it produces viable seed, whereas French tarragon does not. Both spread by rhizomatous growth, meaning underground stems, so there is always that. Always make sure you're buying the right thing when you buy a plant. Um, the labeling can be screwy with French and Russian tarragon, so if it just says tarragon, ask or check the Latin. Now, an alternative will be French, uh, not French tarragon, Mexican, Mexican tarragon, which is Tagetes lucidum. That is actually a marigold. It's an edible marigold. And it is the best substitute for warm season growth if you can't grow the real deal. Also, you can grow it from seed, which is a double bonus. Um, James Andrew Beard, a chef, once said that if I ever had to practice cannibalism, if there was enough tarragon around, I would manage. Now, I paraphrased that a little bit, but that's a pretty good endorsement for an, a singular herb. If that were not enough, the French consider it one of the four fine herbs of French cooking. The other three are parsley, chives, and chervil. Not bad company. Additionally, tarragon is a critical part of Bernays sauce, which is usually that sauce you put on asparagus. So again, not a bad culinary legacy. Also, you can use fresh, lightly brewed sprigs of tarragon to make tarragon vinegar. Not bad. I can only imagine you could do the same for with olive oil. You slightly warm it, bruise the, and stick it in there. Now, lastly, nutrition. Per tablespoon dried, 4.8 grams, roughly. 3 milligrams of sodium, 145 milligrams of potassium, 2.4 grams of carbs, 1.1 gram of protein, 4% of your daily uptake of vitamin C, 8% of iron, 5% of B6, 4% of magnesium, and 5% of calcium. In short, tarragon is a plant that you ought to have in your herb garden. Specifically French tarragon, but Mexican tarragon to G's lucidum if you can get it. Both would be ideal. This plant is an amazingly easy plant to grow. Now this one's growing in a pot because I wanted to see how fluffy I could get it. This plant doesn't want to be as tall as they say it's supposed to be, and it's definitely wider than they say it's supposed to be, but it's happy, and that's all that matters, folks. This has been a quick episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, but I kept it to the point. There's more coming, pending the hurricane chilling out and it stopped raining because camera equipment and rain don't go together. As always, folks, if you like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. If you got any comments or questions, pose them in the uh, comment section. And as always, folks, keep them growing. Thank you for watching.